Hey, welcome to the Rocks Life Podcast. I'm Greg, and in today's episode, we're looking into the mindset of elite high rocks athletes. A lot of focus gets placed on the training regimes of the best of the best in high rocks, and rightly so, it is obviously important, but much less attention goes towards how these athletes think. The fact is, there are some people physically more capable than the elite high rocks athletes right now who probably eat better and who train more intelligently but don't perform as well in high rocks because their mindset in some way is holding them back. High rocks is tough, what allows some athletes to push on in the depths of the race when their bodies are desperate for them to ease off is a real differentiator in the sport. In this episode, I'm gonna be sharing with you some clips from previous interviews I've done with some of the best athletes in the sport where they answer my question around what they think about during a race when the going gets tough. You'll hear from some of the best of the best in the sport, including Hunter McIntyre, Megan Jacoby, Alexander Romcevic, and many more. Each person is different, and my advice would be to listen through and find out which approach you think might work best for you, and then give it a try in your next training session or your race. I genuinely believe it can potentially be a game changer for your performance. Uh, just a quick reminder before we get into the episode, if you'd like any help with your training or your nutrition for High Rocks, then head over to rockslife.com slash coaching or rockslife.com slash nutrition. Okay, let's get into it. First up is a clip from my interview with the fantastic Felicity Cole, who spoke about her grit and how she calls on past experiences to show her what she's capable of. Where I reflect from in a race is other races and experiences and events I've had and I call on them and I think nothing will ever be as painful or as tough or as like um enduring as that and I kind of reflect on that so when I'm like suffering or hurting I'm like this is like nothing it's fine um for example in a marath in the marathon I did I collapsed on the finish line and was then on a drip for two hours like because I pushed that hard and then um, like on the attack the tour, uh, the, the weather, so it was like 212K, the stage of the Tour de France on the bike. And um, it was so, inc I can take like quite extremes of temperature. I'm okay with heat and cold, but it was so incredibly cold. And my hands like froze up on the bike. I couldn't break down the hills. I was like, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I was so cold. I think I was on the close to... Um, like you know when you can't uh function and but then like nine hours later you finish the race and you're like well I got through that and at one point I thought you know I was going to die um but I finished it I got through it and um so from long endurance events I think endurance events give you that feeling of wow this is so hard but I did it I made it so now like an hour's high rocks I'm like okay this is it hurts but it's fine like I've done harder things um so I think there's many different ways of seeing grit um and for me it's it comes the feeling of that comes from having done previous events and getting through them and pushing on previous events because some days you have it and you're just like you can empty yourself and like it's so when you have those workouts where you're like you absolutely like emptied it and then other days you just don't for whatever reason you just don't have it and you just can't push so like not all races are going to be like that so it's just like bringing together all of these experiences and as well actually listening to and having years and years of clients listening to their stories it's fascinating because you're like wow if they've done that then this is nothing like what I'm going through is nothing it's like they've managed to do that so it just like pushes up the levels of like what is achievable and what um what is possible and how much you can push yourself because obviously it's always the brain that gives up before the body so yeah. um sometimes where you can really just be like like how much can i suffer and it's it's like an, a nice feeling in like how much can you push yourself because you're like well i did that before so i know i can do that Next up was John Wynn. John is ex-Australian Special Forces. He just finished sixth at the World Championships in Manchester. And he too talks about previous experiences, but building upon those gradually in training. Like you just have to um, do it incrementally and not bite off too much. I see a lot of a lot of people um, training for this high rock, especially locally, and they're just going real hard all the time and just going, you know, um, 100%. And they, they only can last 100% for a few minutes. That's it. Yeah. Like you've got to be able to go to that threshold 
where you can sustain it and then hurt and then do that for five minutes and then next time 10 minutes next time 15 20 and just work your way up and get used to that that voice in your head that um that tells you to stop slowly starts to go away yeah but you've got to do it incrementally and not big chunks because then it hurts and um you're less likely to come back and give it a crack next time is it is it to, for, for you is it that the voice in your head goes away is it like you ignore it is it you you distract yourself with happy thoughts is it is there a, a certain way that you think about it um for me it's just like uh, it's encouragement i encourage myself that's now now the it's not at the point where like you know it's you can do this yeah like uh i've done that many um simulations in training which, which i go longer than the race so the race feels quite short for me <laughs> so it's, it's over a lot faster than what i train so in that way, um, it's by the time I'm getting really deep, the race is nearly over. Um, yeah. But it's it more, more, it used to be sort of the negative um, voice, but now it's positive. Now it's, um, it's positive affirmations for me. Um, I know I, I can do this year. I also got to talk to Alexander Romcevic. Alex has been on the world championship podium in High Rocks and unprecedented four times. He's an amazing athlete. He's the most consistent athlete in High Rocks history. And here's what he had to say about his mindset during the race. I was there every day. I used to wake up at six o'clock. I've been in the morning. I've been at the morning sessions. I've been at the evening sessions. I trained hard. And for me, uh, competition day is like a, a ceremony for myself to be there and enjoy and show show what I can do. And um, that's, I get a bit nervous just right before the race, before the start, but not that much. Uh, it's like the, maybe the first lap and then it's like, okay, we are, we are in the middle of the race and let's go. Uh, I'm not thinking too much about the other guys because everybody is different. You have like Hunter, this big, massive guy. You have uh, Toby Lautwein, who's a bit smaller. Not uh, he isn't doing that, that much of of strength training. You know, everybody looks different, and you can't say by the look uh, how how anybody is in shape. You know, and uh, that's what I know, and that I'm I'm not thinking about that. Yeah, I'm just yeah. I'm just standing there. I know what I've done, I know um, that I'm ready and, and just go, yeah. I also got to talk to Megan Jacoby. This clip is from an interview I did with her shortly after she initially broke the world record in just her second race in High Rocks. She has since broken it again in under 60 minutes, making her the first female athlete to do so. Uh, here's what she had to say about how she thinks about it and just keeps moving during the race. One thing I kind of learned from my first High Rocks was when you feel like you want to stop, if you don't stop, even if that next rep is slower or if it's maybe not like as good, you feel terrible, but it's, but you can do it. Like if you can keep going, that is the key for sure. So I definitely kind of have that in the back of my mind. Like don't stop, like just every second you can, even if I'm pushing in it, and I'm going slower than if I took a break and was able to put, it's like you lose more time in the break than you think you do maybe. So that's kind of the thing for me. And it's also just like momentum can be everything. Um, this sometimes not to say like everyone, you no, know, you should do everything unbroken, right. It's going to be dependent upon the person. But like for me, if I can keep pushing through that station and get it done, even if, it's a little bit slower than what it could have been because I didn't stop. That helps me in the long run. Like that, that kind of like helps me pot like in a positive way. I'm like, all right, I just, I just did every single lunge without stopping. Like, okay. And that's like just small wins. Like every station you can kind of take a little small win away from it. Then that's going to help you mentally into like going into that next station. If you're like, Oh my God, I took, a minute longer on the sleds because I had to take a break. Like that's, you already have like a little bit of a negative bug in your mind. So that's been like huge for me. Um, and I learned that in New York, um, like the wall balls, I think one of the 
most annoying things for me after that race, other than like the burpee situation was that I didn't do my wall balls unbroken. I'd practiced so hard to be able to do those. And just even taking those, like, I, I think I took like two, maybe three little breaks, but getting going after that was, it felt 10 times harder than doing them unbroken in New York or in uh, Chicago, if that makes any sense. Cause you, you, yeah. you like stop rest and you're like, you know, and you have those like, Oh, cr like this feels so hard. And you, it's easier for those like negative thoughts to creep in. I think if you keep yeah. going, it's like, just keep hammering it. You're almost done. You know, you can kind of trick your brain a little bit more easily. In this next clip, I speak to George Anderson. George and I had a really great conversation about lots and lots of mindset tips that you can use when training and competing in high rocks. If you haven't given that interview a listen, then do so. There's great tips in there for everyone. In this particular clip, he talks about putting himself in the bin and how he looks forward to doing that and how that excitement around that helps him during the race. I read a really good quote by um, Matt Fitzgerald, who wrote, uh, if you've heard of the Iron War, which is a kind of a story of two legendary Ironman competitors. And um, I forget how, exactly how the quote went, but basically it's like, if you know you're going to hell, then it makes being in hell that much more manageable. Okay, so going into something like High Rocks um, and or a training session, let's face it, High Rocks is like the victory lap, right? The event itself. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pain, sweat and suffering in the lead up to that. Uh, you know, if you're taking the, the the preparation seriously, there is, and you know, going into some of those sessions, like anticipating, savoring, looking forward to, embracing the suffering, um, then it's a lot easier to bear it, to manage it, to give meaning and purpose to it than if you're worried about it. Oh, I hope this isn't a hard session, or this is going to be really awful. I'm not going to enjoy this. Like one of the one of the other strategies I, I talk about on the the, the the last episode of this series was um putting yourself in the bin which is a, a beautiful term i i came across by someone i think it was in turf games and I was, what does that mean so if you put yourself in the bin it's like just going absolutely leaving yourself on the, the mat like nothing left and and so actually going into a session going into high rocks with that is the intention like i'm just going to put myself in the bin here i'm just going to destroy myself you know wow what an experience that when that happens it's like yes this is what i want this is it this is i'm getting exactly what i wanted next up there's three different clips the first from kate davy the second from rebecca mason and then the third from james kelly they all talk about in some ways how thoughts of their family help them during the race i can almost this sounds a bit weird not black out i can almost just when i get to a certain point i can almost just switch um there might even be parts of the race afterwards that i don't really remember um it's almost like i just take myself off um it's a bit peculiar uh i think i've learned i think as a mum i always thought that i would be teaching my children everything um and actually i've i've learned a lot from my children uh especially my son um, he's absolutely fine, but like there's been times when he he's gone he's he's had his fair share of stuff when he was younger. And just his bravery throughout everything just it blew me and my husband away. It absolutely blew us away. Um we always say that my daughter is fearless, so um you know she'll jump off of a slide without thinking, she'll like she'll do all the daring stuff, and he probably won't do that, but I realize there's a big difference between being fearless and being brave. Um, and he's he's really brave and he's taught me a lot. Um, so sometimes I think when I'm in that moment, I just kind of think of him a little bit. So, oh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just amazing. Um, but yeah, there's, they're very different characters, but I've learned a lot from them. So it's weird you think you'll teach them stuff, but actually they teach you an awful lot too. Um, so I have a little bit of a mantra, which is, this is my fun. And it's just reminding me that I am choosing to be here. That I feel very grateful to be on that start line. Um, because one, I'm in good health. I've got there because my, my injuries are not so bad. Um, there's a lot of people who haven't got the opportunity to do this. 
So I try and flip it over and, and say like, this is my choice. I don't have to do this. Nobody's making me do this. I'm here because I want to do this. And ultimately I'm I'm good at this. So let's let's push, let's do this. Um and and enjoy it and, and realize like that this is my happy place. Like this is what you've trained for. Actually, an event is kind of the icing on the cake now. What you've done previously is is the hard work. This is this is the fun bit. Um and obviously having my kids at events, they'll be there in Manchester. So seeing them and giving them a little high five on the way through, you know, hopefully um, it's inspiring them. And um, I think the only influencer that I, I, I set out to be is to be a good influence on, on those two. And um, if they can see that mummy's capable of doing hard things, then they can absolutely do it as well. So, um, yeah, having them in the forefront of my mind is, is definitely what my why. Mine's simple. I think about my family. Um, emotion to me creates energy. Um, whether it is good emotion or bad. Um, now, um, I haven't had many hiccups in my life along the way. Touch wood. Um, but I've had some ups. I've had a lot of downs as well. Um, and and the ability to to step out of your um step out of yourself and actually reflect on is this actually if is this actually tough what you're doing in a race compared to um other times of your life and other times of of other people's lives um who have suffered um you, you know it's it's really, it's really fascinating because what we do is a choice. We choose to, you know, do a high rocks race. Um, so my philosophy of, of, of my mindset, sorry, my mindset going into a race is that I'm so excited that I'm, I'm able to do this. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to, to, um, to make my, partner georgie proud to make my family my mum my dad and my sister proud um but deep down like and i'm not afraid to say it i've got this burning like fire inside me still that's trying to prove myself um trying to prove things to myself and you know like i'm trying to make myself proud that's what mm -hmm. i'm trying to say um, because geez, geez, like I'm 29 years of age now and, um, I'm just getting better and better as an athlete. Um, and yeah, it's, it's fascinating. The mindset going through a high rocks race. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs as we know. Um, but you know, what what gets you through is is um the emotions and to me it's my emotions and my thought processes of my loved ones i then spoke with rich ryan who has a somewhat stoic approach during the race uh, this is one that really resonated with me i mean there's a lot of different techniques and i've practiced them uh throughout the years and they all work to a varying degree like what you said like happy thoughts having like a mantra Right. Like mm -hmm. I like to, I like to think of things as like almost belittling my effort that, or like the, the race that I'm doing, like, just like, Oh, this is easy. I feel great. I feel smooth. Even like, even it's, it, that might not be the case. And to a certain point that works, but there, but if you're lying to yourself, you'll know it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you're like, no, this actually sucks. And you're trying to, and like the opposite of feeling good is feeling bad. It's like, oh yeah, I actually feel good. And you don't, and you're like, oh, I feel bad. And then mentally you're just like sinking back down to another place. The one, one thing that I found is really helpful, especially in these hybrid events is just accepting the feeling that you're, that you're in and just kind of sitting in whatever that feels mm -hmm. like and just acknowledging what that is. Right. So it's almost like a, a, a mindfulness practice where in mindfulness, you know, you have a thought that comes in and it doesn't mean you're doing a bad job in meditating or being mindful. It's just that it's it, your thoughts there and then it can go. Right. And then it's nothing but a thought. Like it's the same with the feeling for these events. Like this just feels this way. This isn't pain. 
this isn't like nothing's really necessarily wrong. It's just like a different stimulus. And if you could just sit there and just kind of like hone in on how that feels and just be very present in that moment, it keeps my mind from being like, oh, this is wrong. Something's bad. Something, this isn't right. I'm not I'm dying. My times are slow. But if I could just sit there and kind of feel it and even just acknowledge it as not good, not bad, it just what it is, it's just a feeling that's really helpful. And then you can, then I found that I'm able to kind of go a little bit further into that. It's like, well, let's see what this feeling feels like if I keep going, <laughs> like, what does it feel like if I go a little bit faster? Is it, is it, what's that stimulus kind of feel like? So being present and staying right in it, it's hard because it's all these bells and whistles that are going off, right? Like your respiration gets high, like you're having like these things happen inside of you where it's, it's more lactates being produced. Like there's an actual like burning that's happening and, and your body's trying to slow you down as much as possible, but if you can just kind of sit in it and just feel it, it just kind of takes away the scariness of it. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like not passing judgment on it almost. It's just like this, this is what it is. Stoic. It's what it is. Yeah. Very much. Right. That's a good way to put it. It's a stoic pr- approach for it. Just, this, is, this isn't good. This isn't bad. It's just where I am right now. And even if you can kind of flip it and enjoy the feeling, a little yeah, bit more yeah. of the, on the sadistic side, be like, Hey, this is interesting. Like I don't spend, I'm, I'm always in one specific state almost like, you know, 99% of my time, I feel a certain way. This is the only time I get to feel like this. So like, kind of like indulging yourself and feeling like, like that it's interesting. It's like a different way to kind of feel, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so that that's been pretty helpful recently on my end. This next clip is from Harry Thompson shortly after he won the men's pro division at Olympia at High Rocks London. In terms of what I'm thinking when I'm training, it, it does vary day to day because it's kind of, you know, your mood is going to go up and down um, and you've got to appreciate that and kind of make space for that. Generally, the things I focus on are trying to look at whatever I'm doing. So say a workout and you could take a high rock simulation as a good example, but it could be any workout over any time domain and thinking, you know, how should I be approaching this? Where should I break this up? If anywhere, if it's really short, if it's, you know, like you said, like a 500 meter max row, um, max speed rowing test, then there's no need to break it up at all. You just get into it and you get after it. But if it's something that's kind of six minutes plus or 20 minutes plus even or or up to an hour if it's like a high rock simulation or a high rocks race you're going to have time to think about what you're doing and your attention span is going to break at some point for when you're looking at that length of time so trying to pretend or train that it won't is is not going to help you what you need to do is actually appreciate it is going to be different and that's fine but what are you going to do? And what are the sorts of things you're going to focus on in that moment? And something like high rocks where you've got one constant, which is the run. And so you kind of keep going out on the run and then you hit station one and then you run again and then you hit station two. It's really good. Uh, it's a really good opportunity to think about resetting and, and kind of that way, if you have a bad run, so say you come off the back of the sled push and you run 40 seconds slower than what your ideal target pace, then at least when you come on to the next station, it's so different that you're not hitting the same thing again and again. So then you don't need to let that kind of negativity compound and affect the next thing. And I think that's one of the big things like I try to focus on and I try and put myself in a, in slightly difficult positions in training by using my training partners to help me out. And they're fantastic at Testudo for doing that. They will, you know, they might lap me in a workout or they might deliberately, they might skip a round or they might add an extra round. So they know there's going to be five rounds. And I think there's four and I empty the tank on the fourth. And then suddenly they tell me I've got to go again. And things like that really help to build that mental resilience where you don't let something compound and the negativity build as you go through an event, but actually you flick a switch and you settle much quicker and you try and process it. And I think it's just trying to, for me, that's that's what works. I'm not saying it would work for everyone, but I think it's a good way to look at your training and then that comes into your race because you, you're you setting yourself up so that if things go kind of slightly off plan or maybe if they go majorly off plan, you don't just throw the towel in. And like a good example was with Birmingham. You know, I said I got my nutrition wrong. I, I like threw up in my mouth on like the second run, I think it was just from feeling just dreadful. And that happened a couple of times. And then I, I tweaked my soleus in my, in my right leg on, I think the fourth or the fifth run. 
So kind of halfway through, and it would have been easy at that point to say, oh, I'm halfway through. I think I was sat in about third place at the time and just say, you know what? Cut it, cut the losses. I've got, an, I, there's other races this season. I'll just dive out. And But I just got onto the next station, reset, just said, no, it's okay. You're all okay. Nothing, mate. You're not, you know, you're not in searing pain. You just got this calf tightness and you just feel a bit uncomfortable. Just reset, go again. It's a new round. It's a new round. And then before I knew it, you know, you'd processed, you felt much better. And then I could push on the last couple of rounds and, and kind of overtake the guys in my heat and, and finish second. So I think without having those, that type of training built in, it, I probably wouldn't have thought that way. And I probably would have just thought, oh no, I've worked really hard for this race. I feel awful. I'm going to be sick. My calf really hurts. And then you would have started to either back off the pace to try and build space for you to feel better, or maybe just cut the ties and just gone, you know what? No, it's not worth it. It's not worth the risk and stop then. So I think that's, that's how I approach it. I know it's quite a long winded answer, but yeah, like the way to, the way I see it is kind of a series of short tasks that you try and segregate from one another. So that if one goes bad or one goes really well, it doesn't infect the next one and the next one and the next one. And, um, and, and viewing it in that, in that place mentally has helped me to kind of, you know, perform um, recently, like how, how I wanted to. And then last, but by no means least, we've got Hunter McIntyre, the men's world record holder, the current world champion, who gives us a really good insight into his mind during the race. Uh, listen to this fantastic clip from someone who refers to himself as a God King. But when I used to be 16, I watched this movie with these aliens and there was this big alien that was coming to destroy the planet. And it was a joke movie, but he was his name was Kroger. He's like, Kroger is the strongest. Kroger is the best. Kroger can be like, you know, all these things. And like, they stomp around. And I just started saying that in my cross country races as I was just beating the piss out of all these other kids. And I just kept on doing it forever. And it's been the same kind of dialogue forever where I just – I catch myself out there on these runs and I'm like, my legs are dead. My head's going to explode. And then all of a sudden I get into my narrative, my mantra, and then I'm gone. Like literally all of a sudden I go from like, uh, boom, and, and I just am out and I'm moving so quickly. And the more I say it, the more almost like everything else dissipates. I can't – I'm not thinking of people. I'm not thinking of the next station. I'm not thinking of anything other than the exact act in the moment as I'm doing it, as if no one else could do it. No one else could be here. No one else could understand this. Yet, just from being here, you're already above that. You're above that idea. I know that sounds odd, but you just kind of transcend into this space and you're going. You don't even know it until you're there. And you're like, oh my God, I just ran two laps and I'm back on the entrance again and I'm on world record pace. And uh, that's where I end up. That's where I end up. I, I don't even notice the movements. I just notice the being above and beyond everything that's going on. I'm just, I'm above it. I know that sounds odd. Nice. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Is there is there some like you you said about like is there affirmations in there? Are you like are you when you're in that place are you telling yourself like I'm the best? One hundred percent. I honestly tell myself I'm a god king all the time. It's like not a god, not a king, a god king. <laughs> and I was sitting there, sitting next to somebody. It was really interesting. We're flying through London. Flying from Barcelona, I end up on a flight next to this guy. We're going through security together, getting out under the London Heathrow. And he's this guy, he goes, You're from the States, aren't you? And I was like, Yeah. I'm like, California. He goes, Ah, oh, cool, Oregon. So we sit down, then we go into the lounge and we just start having lunch. We never met each other before. We spent two hours together drinking whiskey in the airport. And we don't know each other from a hole in the wall at all. And he's kind of this person who's gone down this whole psychedelic approach of doing, you know, mushrooms and ayahuasca and things like that. And I was telling him about some of my experiences and he doesn't know who I am. And I'm not trying to assume that he should know who I am. And we get to this conversation point and I was like, Hey, listen, I'm not trying to be braggadocious, but I'll just be totally honest. Like I've done all of these things. And he's like, and he was talking about ego. And I was like, yeah, man, like, I'm not trying to tell people that I'm better than them. I'm just knowing that I'm better than them. And that's the only way that I'm able to approach these things. Otherwise I can't end up in the place that I'm at. I can't even have the conversation of who is the best. I already know who's the best. 
It's not even a question. It's not even a conversation because it's already been chiseled into the ground and everywhere I look. You know what I mean? Before you asked the question, I knew you knew. And before I answered the question, I knew I knew. And you have to be in that place. Otherwise, you will never – You it will be harder for you to get to that place if you're not willing to even know that it's already happening. And there, that's it. Ten elite High Rocks athletes giving you an insight into their mindset during the depths of a High Rocks race. Hopefully it's helped. Hopefully you'll find something useful for you. Uh, just a reminder, if you do need any help with your training for High Rocks, then head over to rockslife.com slash coaching now, and I will talk to you again soon.